Hello everybody and welcome to Written in Blood. My name is John and today I'm going to be doing a review of Devil's Creek by Todd Kiesling. This is the latest book from Todd Kiesling and it's going to be published in June 20th, I believe, of 2020. I was hit up with an advanced reader copy from Ken over at Silver Shamrock Publishing, so thank you Ken for that. So let's go ahead and get underway with the review. All right, so first of all, we have the past. Back in 1983, there was this reverend by the name of Jacob Masters, and he was a fan of that old-time religion. You know the song, give me that old-time religion, give me that old-time... Yeah, anyway. All right, so he wanted to call forth the one true God. All right, so he got a congregation together, the same people, they believed the same stuff that he believed. Only thing is, is this one true God, it wasn't the God from up above like sits on a throne and watches over us all and everything. No, this is a God from below. This is a God from the dirt, from the maggots and stuff. This was a God that required sacrifice in order to be called forth, okay? So what does this reverend do? He has sex with some of the women in his con congregation. And we know if he has sex with at least six of them because they have, they have you have six children and he's going to use these six children in a sacrifice to call forth this one true God. Sorry, I'm saying that looks like five. That's just me making an emphasis or whatever. It's six children. Anyway, so the grandmother of one of these children, Jack, she's like, no way. This ain't going to happen. So she gets together a group of the uh, town folk that don't buy into this guy's stuff and his stories and his tales or whatever. And they decide they're going to put a stop to it. And they do, all right? So they put a bullet, they, she puts a bullet in this guy's head, in this Jacob Master's head, and they burn that church to the ground. End of story. You know, crisis averted. One true God not called forth, okay? All right, so cut forth to cut forward to modern times, to 2020. Jack's all grown up, all the other children of this, all these other six children, they're all grown up. Jack returns to Stafford, Kentucky, which is where this takes place. And he is getting his grandmother's affairs in order. She took care of him. His mother, she was one of the ones who was going to, she was going to, his mother was one that was going to sacrifice him. His grandmother was the one that put a stop to it. His mother's in an insane asylum. She's cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs, so to speak. All right. So anyway, his grandmother passes away, and he inherits money from her, inherits the house from her. He's trying to get her affairs in order. He reconnects with some of the, the other six children, uh, and you know they kind of form a kind of a bond, I guess you could say. But when you have it, when you know it, not only when he returns, but Jacob Masters comes back from the grave, from the dead, with the full intention of starting up this church again, with the full intention of calling forth this one true God. And, of course, that's going to call for more sacrifice and more children to be sacrificed. So now it's up to these previous six children, all grown up now, of course, to put a stop to this reverend. You know, before all hell literally breaks loose in the town of Stafford, Kentucky. All right, that's pretty much the gist of the plot of Devil's Creek. I love this book. I did. I don't want to give away too much about it because I want people to read this book. I give this book a full five-star rating. I did. I absolutely loved it. Um, I'm surprised that I didn't just... It's about 400 pages long, I believe, and I'm surprised I didn't just fly through it right, like a like a jet plane or something like that because... But I didn't want to miss anything in this book. That's how good it is. I wanted to get the full gist of this book. I wanted to get the full experience of this book is how much I loved it. And I don't want to sound like I'm hyping it up too much. So I'm going to kind of cut my, I'm going to kind of lower down the hype a little bit. All I'm going to say is this. Read, read, when the June 20th comes out, pick this book up and read it. And the one thing I love the most about it, and I wrote Todd Kiesling and I asked him, I said, is there a not-so-subtle hint of cosmic horror in this book? And he didn't answer me. So I'm thinking, well, maybe he wants me to form my own conclusion. And the thing about it is, is that I don't only really think that there's a, a hint or a not-so-subtle hint of cosmic horror. I think this book also has a hint of adult or um, adult occult horror also. 
I believe that this book walks the thin line between William Peter Blatty and H.P. Lovecraft, between Pazuzu and Cthulhu. You know, the thing about it is, is he never says the, the name of this one true God that this reverend is supposed to be trying to call forth from the dirt and the maggots and stuff like that. You know, and the thing about it is also is that Kiesling, he throws in little subtle hints that this is a book of cosmic horror. Uh, he names one of the locations after a character in Lovecraft's book, uh, the uh, Dunwich Horror, which is, um, or is the Dunwich Horror the color out of space? I cannot remember, but it's Wilbur Waitley. So he names a location after that character. Uh, he mentions the, uh, the Necronomicon in the book, which is another thing that Lovecraft wrote about. <clears throat> and he also there's also an underlying theme of of racism in this small town, and there's the underlying theme of the un, the uh, theme of the unknown in this book also. So and the thing about it is is the cosmic horror and occult horror are both a, a thing that is a fear of the unknown. You know, cosmic horror doesn't necessarily come from the stars. You know, from from the cosmos or whatever. It comes from from in between worlds. It comes. It's a fear of what we can't see. It's the fear of the un of an un, the unknown. <clears throat> Excuse me. So that's one of the reasons. Like I said, I love this book is because it dances that thin line between cosmic and occult horror. You know, um, yeah. I mean, there it's it's spooky. It's scary. It's creepy. Uh, it's suspenseful. I mean, I wanted to keep turning the pages because I wanted to know what was going to happen next. <clears throat> Excuse me. Sorry about that. I'm talking too much. Let me get a sip of coffee here. All righty. But anyway, that's my review of Devil's Creek by Todd Kiesling. Like I said, the book's coming out June 20th, 2020. By all means, pick this book up. I absolutely loved it. If, if you're a horror fan... Uh, you're going to love this book. If you're a fan of occult horror, uh, you're going to love this book. If you're a fan of cosmic horror, you're going to love this book. All right? I can't praise it anymore. You know, so I'm going to stop the hype train here. I don't want to overhype it and people go, well, it's not what I expected or anything like that. Just read the book. It's awesome. Five stars. And thank you. I thank you all for watching. And y'all have a great day. Bye-bye.